In part two, we'll continue our discussion of the muscles of the head, face, and neck. Uh, in this video, we're going to start off with taking a look at the actual muscles that move the eye. Then we'll take a look at the muscles of the anterior neck. We're going to divide that up into two groups, the suprahyoids, right? that would be the muscles above the hyoid. The muscles below the hyoid are going to be the infrahyoids. We'll then take a look at some muscles kind of on the anterior lateral aspect of the neck. We'll take a look at the sternocleidomastoid. We'll take a look at the scalene group. And then we'll finish off the lab by taking a look at some muscles on the posterior aspect of the neck. So let's begin by taking a look at the ocular muscles. So this is a model that is actually showing the inside of the orbit with the eye in place. And we'll actually look at the anatomy of the eye when we get to the end of the semester. So we're on our checklist. We're still on the first column. The first four muscles I have for you, if you see there, are the inferior rectus, superior rectus, the medial rectus, and the lateral rectus. Those four muscles all move the eye in the direction of their name. So just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. I'll point them out first. So this is a superior view into the orbit. You'll see that most of the muscles all begin in the back of the eye. There's actually a ring in the back of the eye that these muscles attach to. So this first muscle here is the superior rectus. It starts in the back of the eye and then it comes directly over and attaches to the top of the eyeball. When it contracts, it's going to pull the eyeball backwards this way, and it's going to actually raise the eye. We can just catch a glimpse of it, but right over here on the floor, running to the underside of the eye, this is going to be the inferior rectus. So when that muscle contracts, it's going to pull your eye back, uh, eyeball down. Right? If you would just hold your head straight and just look up to the ceiling, that would be the superior rectus. If you were to kind of hold your head straight and look down towards your desk or your table, that would be the inferior rectus. On the outside right here, so it starts in the back of the uh, eye, eye socket, goes along to the side of the eye right here, to the outside of the eye. This is going to be called the lateral rectus. And obviously, it's going to move the eyeball in a lateral direction. Finally, the last rectus is known as the medial rectus. So again, this one starts in the back of the eyeball, comes along, and then goes to the side of the eye, but this time the inside of the eyeball. So we can see here the medial rectus is on the inside of the eyeball lateral rectus is on the outside. Superior rectus we can see is on top and we don't see the whole thing but the inferior rectus we know is going to the the bottom of the eyeball. When the medial rectus contracts it's going to pull the eyes like to be like cross-eyed right? pull your eye your eyeballs in. Okay so just remember that any muscle in the eye that's named rectus is going to move the eye in the direction of the name. The last two muscles are oblique muscles. So what I did here is I took the superior rectus off and you can see I just kind of pulled it back. And here we can see the medial rectus, the lateral rectus, and just again a glimpse of that inferior rectus. The muscle that we want to look at starts in the back of the eye socket goes up along the top of the orbit. Notice though it does not go directly to the eye. Instead it's going to go through this little pulley over here. This is actually called the trochlea and then the fibers go back to the eye. So since it's not going directly to the eye and it's its line of pull is being changed by this pulley, it's going to move the eyeball in the direction opposite its name. It actually moves the eyeball down and out, right? Down and lateral. All right, so the oblique muscle is going to do the opposite. The last muscle is actually the only muscle that doesn't begin in the back of the eyeball, but rather it starts on the maxilla and then it goes at an angle underneath the eye and comes to the lateral part of the eye. So it's going at an angle. That's why they call it the inferior oblique. All right, so like I said, this one you're going to have to do from you have to find from the front of the orbit. Since the muscle is an oblique muscle, it moves the uh, the muscle or moves the eyeball and the name 
in the, in the direction opposite of its name. This one is going to move the eyeball up and out, right? Up and lateral. Okay, so continuing down, if you take a look at the checklist, we'll do the muscles of the anterior neck. The first muscles we're going to do, uh, there's eight of them. Four of them are going to be above the hyoid bone, and the other four are going to be below. These are a little bit more difficult to see. Let's start with the digastric. So di means two, gastric is like a belly, so there's two bellies. The first belly we could see for the digastric actually comes from like the mastoid process here and then it comes down towards the tendon that we start to lose right about here so this is the posterior belly and then the tendon is going to pick up and it's going to go to the inside of the mandible on the front kind of in the mental region so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the picture here's the anterior belly here's that tendon I was talking about that where the posterior belly comes in here's your posterior belly kinda comes in and now the anterior belly is gonna come and go to the underside of the mandible so what I did is I just took a picture of the jaw from underneath here's the anterior belly now when you're actually holding the model and looking at it it'd be a little bit easier to visualize All right, so this is the front part of the digastric and then over here would be the back part of the digastric the next muscle actually attaches to the styloid process. If you remember that little stylus, right, that little stick that stuck down from the temporal bone, and then it goes to the hyoid bone. This is going to be the stylohyoid muscle. The third muscle actually forms like the floor of our mouth. So this is kind of a broad muscle that goes across and forms the floor of the mouth. This is the mylohyoid. There's one other muscle, the geniohyoid. We can't see it on these models here unless we were to cut the the model apart. So it's not visualized on, on, on these images here. But this would be the the, the, the the muscle above it would be the geniohyoid. All right, so the mylohyoid forms the floor of the mouth. Again, here we see the digastric muscle, the anterior. Here's your digastric, the posterior view or the posterior belly. And this would be the stylohyoid. All four of these muscles are synergistic in raising the hyoid bone. So they all attach to the upper part of the hyoid and they help to elevate the hyoid. And here's actually the hyoid bone too. The next four muscles are the infrahyoids. So the first one I have on our checklist is called the omohyoid. So this muscle here going straight down, here's the hyoid bone actually. So here it's coming from the hyoid bone going straight down. There's a little bit of a tendon here and then there's another belly this here that actually heads down towards the scapula. Um, Greek almost means shoulder, right? Omo means shoulder, so it's actually heading down towards the shoulder. That's why they named it the omohyoid. So this is going to be the omohyoid. The next muscle I have on your list is the sternohyoid. So this is actually starting on the sternum and going up to the hyoid bone. Now, on this model, it's a little bit hard to see. It's coming up from the sternum here, but notice what they did is they cut it if it was intact it would go from here and it would continue up all the way to the hyoid bone superficially but they cut it so we could see some of the deeper structures so this is the sternohyoid cut the next muscle is right underneath it you can see here it's called the sternothyroid so it's starting on the sternum and then it's going up to this blue structure right over here. This blue structure is our thyroid cartilage. So it's named based on what it's attaching to. It's going from the sternum up to the thyroid cartilage. The fourth muscle goes from the thyroid cartilage up to the hyoid bone. So this muscle here is actually attached to the thyroid, goes up to the hyoid bone. Okay, so I labeled it. So the first one we had on our checklist is the omohyoid. Again, if you remember, omo means shoulder. That will help you to see that the one heading down towards the shoulder blade would be the, you know, the scapula would be the omohyoid. Oops. The most superficial is the 
sternohyoid, but they cut it so we could see the deeper structures. Then this one going from the sternum to the thyroid, sternothyroid. And then going from the thyroid cartilage up to the hyoid bone is the thyrohyoid. Again, here's our hyoid bone. And then again, this blue structure here is the actual thyroid cartilage. All four of these muscles are attached to the underside of the hyoid. And when they contract, they pull the hyoid bone down. So they depress the hyoid bone, right? All four muscles are synergistic in depressing the hyoid bone. The model that's a little bit easier to see is our um, the, the, the larger torso model that we have. I took a picture from the front to show you. The first muscle was the omohyoid. So you can see, here's the hyoid bone up here. The omohyoid goes down, and then we said omo means shoulder, and look how it goes over to the shoulder blade right that way, going over to the scapula. So that one's an easy one to see, the omohyoid. The next muscle was the superficial one that was cut on the previous model, but if you look here, it's intact very nicely. This is your sternohyoid, straight run up to the hyoid bone. And then the last two, this is the sternothyroid. It goes from the sternum up to the thyroid cartilage and then the thyrohyoid picks up where it left off from the thyroid cartilage straight up to the hyoid bone. This would be the thyrohyoid. Right, so this is actually a little bit of an easier muscle to uh, an easier model to find those four uh, infrahyoid muscles. The next muscle is the sternocleidomastoid. You can see here I've ran out of space, so I just abbreviated it. A lot of times in medicine, they just call it the SCM. Um, this is actually on our small torso model. Here it is on our head and neck model. This muscle was named based on its origin and insertion. Right? There's a sternal head that goes to the manubrium. There's a clavicular head that goes to the clavicle. That means clido. Then the two heads come together along the side of the neck, and they go up to the mastoid process. Right? So sterno, clido, and the muscle goes up and attaches to the mastoid process. When the left and the right SCMs contract, it actually flexes the neck. Right? If you were to lay on your pillow in your bed, laying face up, and just kind of lift your head off the pillow, you can feel both SCMs contract. When one muscle contracts, it turns the head to the opposite side. So in this case, we're looking at the left SCM. If this muscle were to contract, it would turn our head to the right, right? We actually call that contralateral rotation, right? Opposite side rotation. The next group of muscles we call the scalenes. There's three of them. So in order to see this, I had to remove the SCM, which would run like this. It would run right over it. We took the SCM off and we're going to see one muscle here called the anterior scalene. Behind it in the middle is the middle scalene. Both of these go from the cervical spine to the first rib. Then the third scalene actually goes from the cervical spine down to the second rib. So these three muscles, when they contract, they're going to move the neck. They can actually flex the neck and laterally flex the neck, which means to side bend. But from a clinical point of view, these are actually important. When somebody has difficulty breathing, they actually lock the neck in place. And since these three muscles are attached to the ribs, they can pull the ribs up to assist in breathing. Right? Sometimes you'll have a patient that's a diff breather. They're having difficulty breathing and shortness of breath. You see them using their neck muscles to get air in. Maybe an asthmatic may do something like that. So these are also sometimes called accessory muscles of respiration. The other thing I just want to point out clinically, if you look at the anterior scalene here, and then here's the post of uh, the middle scalene, excuse me, the middle scalene, between these two muscles, we have this big blood vessel. You're going to study this in AMP too. This is called the subclavian artery. And then later this semester, we're going to look at these nerves right here, this white structure of these nerves. This is the brachial plexus. They come out between the middle scalene and the anterior scalene. If a patient were to have an injury, maybe a bad whiplash, these muscles can swell and bleed, actually, and compress 
the brachial plexus and pr compress the subclavian artery so that now an individual would have a, a lack of possibly a lack of blood supply going into their arm or nerve supply going into their arm and we call that condition thoracic outlet condition or thoracic outlet syndrome right, so these is just kind of a very important clinical area as they these muscles help with breathing and they do potentially can pinch the subclavian artery and or the brachial plexus We'll finish up this lab by taking a look at the muscles of the posterior neck. Now, this moves us to the second column, and I'll review this in my uh, video on the uh, muscles of the trunk. Um, if you go to the second column now and just kind of look at the muscles of the posterior trunk, we'll see some of these muscles. So I'm just focusing on the neck today. On the subsequent videos we'll take a look at the muscles down over here that are lower so the first one we want to look at is the upper trapezius notice on this side here it's on the superficial side right so this is a superficial muscle the upper trapezius muscle actually will help to elevate the shoulder and right? if you went to the gym and you grabbed some dumbbells and you just kind of uh, shrugged your shoulder right they call that shoulder shrugs you're actually contracting your upper trapezius This muscle right here, it's a deep muscle, goes up to the occiput. This is called the semi-spinalis capitis. When this muscle contracts, it actually pulls the head backward, right? So we would call this extension of the head. This muscle right below it, a little bit more superficial, is the splenius capitis. The splenius capitis also when it contracts with the other one on the other side is going to extend the head so they actually pull the head backwards when one muscle here contracts by itself and not the other and you know, we don't have the other one here I just cut, just cut away the this is the um, this is going to actually cause same side rotation it'll it'll turn if this one contracted it would turn the head to the left okay so um, splenius capitis will extend the neck when the left and the right contract together when one side contracts it'll turn the the head to the same side this muscle here we're gonna look at again when we do um, the the arm muscle is a muscle that goes from the cervical vertebrae to the superior angle of the scapula when it contracts it will lift the scapula hence the name levator scapulae and here's the same three or four muscles on the uh, torso model again semispinalis capitis again when they contract bilaterally will extend the head splenius capitis when it contracts bilaterally will extend the neck when one side contracts it will turn the head to the same side here's our levator scapulae right, you can actually see it go into the superior angle right here elevates the scapula and then finally the most superficial muscle kind of running up the neck is the uh, upper trapezius muscle which will cause like a shoulder shrug it's going to elevate the shoulder